Yeah, and I mean, it's it's now right after this this shooting of Brahmi, or was it before like this? Is it well, somehow first... is it somehow influenced by uh, by by Egypt? I mean, uh, well, you know, you cannot disconnect because it's the same uh, group of terrorism. And I think and there is nothing left, um, it's not randomly done. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's not. No, 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 no. And there is, there, is, um, there is a strategy to put the Arab, or the, all the countries that are trying to really go through this, this process or build the system and structure for a, a democracy to just be in a mess. So this is what is creating a messy situation where, I mean, um, there was a steps in the attacks. They started cheering the flag yeah. as the first step, and then they started threatening verbally, and then physically, the artists, the journalists, they did politicians. They did. Wow. Yes, and then they stopped. Well, at the beginning, it was also women and talking about women, and then it moved to another level. And because of the government. Uh, the absence of the government reaction to that. Uh, because if you threaten somebody to, to, to kill somebody, normally you should be punished. I mean, it's not some, uh, even on TV. Because of the, what you call impunity, I don't know in English it is, yeah. yeah impunity. And things have, things are going to another, or went to another level, which was really um, attacking physically the politicians. And the first who was killed was the the guy from the opposition called the Negev, um, he was like beaten and to death, and no reaction, no unity, no was, nobody was caught. So they went to another level of shooting, shooting uh, Shukri Bil Eid in front of his house with arms. And many have been warning about arms and the traffic arms from Libya and all these, uh, uh, you know, this traffic. Uh, the problem we have a government that is oddest that doesn't hear what the people are saying and for, for they they trusted the Salaf is saying that they are the kids of Tunisia, they will not hurt Tunisia and they underestimated what they were thinking, I mean their will to really be in power. And even the Islamist party in Tunisia is being treated by the Salafists as uh, you know, moderate, completely moderate uh, and um, uh, 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 to the limit of um, how do we call it in English? It's um, say it in what, what, yes. what, what is it? It, it means they are, they are like uh, um, those who um, like 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 yeah like so um, so then now it's moving to terrorist attacks. Mm. Uh, I suppose that. Uh, so there is like um, steps by steps, but what ha what happened in Algeria, uh, in uh, Egypt, sorry, is um, we c it cannot be compared, but it can affect definitely. Yeah. So are you afraid that you walk down the same path, that it will happen? Like what's no, happening? I'm not, I'm not afraid. We are not going to go to the same path. Because our military has a completely different story. Can you hold on a second? Yeah, of course. Um, we, we, the, our military is really um, it, it is not involved in politics at all. We don't have such a powerful military. They are really independent. There are people who are getting who know who have a mission, and this is their mission: is not to get involved in in anything but secure the country. So it's not the same. We cannot put us all in the same box. And maybe this is what is uh, make you know what is making the um, the probability of success of the transition is in Tunisia. That's I mean, what I can, yeah. So so it is being attacked. It's for me. Say for me uh, this month, July two thousand thirteen, is our September eleven. And we're not gonna give up. It's as simple as that. Uh, these are, uh, how do you say? It's it's a, it's a limited number of people who wanna destroy this. I mean, our stability or our 
will and our engagement to make this process succeed. Mm -hmm. If one day one would think that it's going to happen in two years, Yemen, come on, that's not realistic. We are going to go through these, you know, shots, through these blood, you know, it's going to happen. It happened all over the world, as I told you earlier. I mean, you know, in Europe it took like, you know, like 200 years and now they are destroying everything because of this 9-11. It's going to happen. It's, there, is, there is no turnkey solution to go from a revolution to a democratic state. I mean, we have a heritage, a heritage of ignorance, of culture, of dictatorship, of uh, untrust, of uh, all this thing. You know, it, it's 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 huge to to make this shift, uh, and it's 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 psychological. It's 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 many. It's not just about politics. It's absolutely. about human being. It's about culture. So, it's a, it's a cultural fact. Absolutely, it's a cultural fact, but it's it's a culture that we have to build ourselves. It cannot be, be imported. It cannot be even imported from another Muslim Arab country, even if it if it existed. Everything has to be created from scratch, scratch in Tunisia. How can have can how how can we have a democratic system that can coexist with Islam? How can I have a constitution? that belongs to the people and, not, and does not come from the Quran because supposedly in a Muslim country the constitution is the Quran. So how can we have a, 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 a human as opposed or cope with a, you know, like a divine constitution? So we are in a, in a very exciting, dangerous, but feasible And we've got to be wise. Yes, we have the right to be scared, and sometimes I'm really completely disappointed. But the next day, I have work to do, and I have um, we, we 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 have to react wisely, and we should not like be emotional. Our culture and our um, how do we say our we are a a, a a population that has a lot of emotions. Yeah, and enough. I think we should reduce this and just be wise sometimes. So, <laughs> so and it, 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 it's going to come to work with the emotions, uh, the, the feeling for God, work, um, be uh, cope with what we expect from life, uh, that we work for our life and not for the for the after death. It, it's a completely different state of mind. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Do you think that many people get these points you are just mentioning? Or are you some kind of elite talking about this? I'm not an elite. I am, uh, I'm not an elite. I, I don't know what it means to be an elite. I am the product of a Tunisian society. I'm a product of Tunisian education. I was born, raised, educated in Tunisia. I talk to Tunisians. I am at the grassroots. I work with the grass. I work with the grassroots people. I talk about projects and try to bring funds for projects that are touch the human beings. So when you talk to the people here, this is what they want. We refuse violence. Maybe they don't have the same speech. They don't. They don't talk like me because I, I, ha I, I learned how to express myself. But deep, we do share the same thing. A woman in the rural area, she would not. She would not except to be guided or to be told how to, 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 to make, you know, to, to live uh, a young, the young generation, we have an amazing young generation that has been excluded. That's the mistake that has been excluded from this process. And this is why they are in the street, maybe because they are angry. They still anger against a government, another one coming after the election that is disconnected from its population. You so, would say they uh, are disconnected? Yes, yes, yes. Again, we have, again, politicians that don't hear the street. Again, the Arab population, I'm talking about Tunisia, again, again, this is exactly what happened with the dictatorships. The government does not hear the citizens, and the people in the Western countries do not hear what the people in, in our countries wa want. The Islamist party has been supported regardless of the reaction of the population, because they made mistakes, we're saying, 
that they are making mistakes, but the Western countries and many countries have been supporting the Islamists because, oh, we find it. It's a solution. It's a moderate Islamist. There is nothing moderate Islamist, but if we want to make it moderate Islamist, it's thanks to the street and the people in the street. They, they started writing a constitution that was based on the Sharia, and it's based, it's the people who went on the street that changed many of the articles. So we do have population and people in our country that want to live with dignity. Call it democracy. I don't care what it's called. I really don't give a damn. That's true. Democracy, yeah. dignity, freedom, call it anything. It's, it's um, to enjoy life with respect. Absolutely. Uh, to be respect. You know what? We want to be respected so we can respect. We have not been respected for centuries now. Neither by our governments, nor by the, the, the international community. And based on what's happening in our country, I am ashamed. Because we are proving that we are violent again. We are proving that we don't know how to choose for ourselves. But, you know, um, as I said, it's like delivery. It's very painful. I mean, you know who understands you know understand that this transition to democracy, that is how painful it is? It's the woman who delivered a baby. I <laughs> it's a transition. It's a true transition. <laughs> no, but you can't talk to a man. You say it's like a delivery. You will not understand what it means. But with women, we have this faculty, you know, we have this gift of adapting to the situation very quickly. Becoming a woman, a businesswoman, a mother, everything at the same time. So we know what it means to go. So I think uh, this is why I, we invest a lot of our activities on women. Yeah. And I, I do believe in parts of women. Anyway. Uh, so wh why do you think right now, I mean, it's like two and a half years now, more than no, that? No, 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 it's less than two years. Uh, it started in December. It, we, we, we elected, no, 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 the election. Oh, the where, election, uh, okay. Uh, no, no, not the revolution. I'm talking about government and transition, right, right. that will write a constitution, that yeah. will establish the independent uh, institution for the elections, that's going to do, you know, yeah, this, uh, yeah. that's going to build the, the path, you know, to a really uh, a democratic system, like in, in, in what type of government, what type of elections, yeah, right. what, what are the... How did all stuff? this affect your daily activities, your your business? Let Sometimes I'm losing you. It doesn't affect my... Your business. The, the work the you're doing. No, no. I'm, I'm in development. I am recruited as a consultant to, 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 to work on development projects that are touching, you know, the people of the grassroots, women, youth, yeah. unemployment, informal to formal sector, all these issues. I'm working on issues. So I belong, I'm the woman of the issues. So... <laughs> There are funds coming to support the work, what we are trying to do in terms of giving the tools for the people to get to find employment or can, you know, move to the formal sector or empower women. So in terms of me, but the economy of the government, of the, of the economy of the country is really being affected to a degree that is becoming dangerous because we are losing investments, we are losing our tourists, we are the expert because of these strikes. The credibility of the country, you know, has been put into, you know, we've been um, um, put, you know, in terms of uh, the rates, we've been... Uh, yeah, been so, you know, so, you know, it, it, it's going to affect. But, you know, what can I say? It's, um, it's, it's, it's either dictatorship or a painful transition. So we, we, what do we want? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's like somebody who's been in jail for I don't know for since Burgiba, I mean since the independence since '56, and then he has to learn how to live free, freely. Yeah. So, so yeah. the I mean you work kind of closely with the Americans. Uh, yes. Yes. So yes, I mean America plays some kind of role in this entire process. How is America yes, these but, days you know, appreciated in or not appreciated in, in 
Tunisia. Is there any discussion going on? I think that uh, at the beginning, you know, just after the election, what we what we keep hearing is that, uh, and when the the many of the American officials whom we met are asked the question, why are you supporting the Islamist Party? They used to respond, because they, you you have elected them. So we are supporting those whom you have elected. But I think it was uh, supporting them in an exaggerated way, saying like. Uh, uh, now that they are there in their country, that they have power, we're going to try to sustain them. So we do believe that they might install some kind of democracy. And I think they, it, they were over-trusted, over-estimated. There was no one single doubt that this could be used as a, as like the, the first step to take the power and then is, um, make Islamize the country yeah. on a step-by-step -step basis. And this is where the criticism for the U.S. government, you know, come from. And uh, um, but I have to say that the Islamist party, especially the Tunisian one, and I mean, have good antennas at the State Department. Okay. They knew how to convince the American government that they are really trying to create a democracy that can cope with Islam. But in reality, like what Morsi has done. And what the Islamist party has done, tried to do in Tunisia, it's not the truth. So to which extent, I mean, the, the U.S. government, I know they, they care about their interest, but again, uh, I don't think that being taken one side will work for its interest anymore. So in any case, even with the moderate party, they should be very careful about not taking the side of anyone but just now being careful on whom to support and how to support without really choosing one side over the other one. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the relationship between the U.S., it's not going very well because now the U.S., especially after the attack against the embassy, it's like a wake-up call saying, you are making a mistake. You cannot trust people who can trust Salafists. You cannot trust people who can say Salafists, they are our children, and the head of the Islamist party in Tunisia said, they remind me of my youth. So it's, it's many things. Though I don't think that any, of, any government like the British, I mean, American, French, German, they know how to cope with the Arab Muslim world anymore. They, they, they have, nobody has a clue where it's going to go. They thought that we chose the Islamist party that, and that we voted for them, that we're going to be happy. All of a sudden they realize, no, we are not happy and we want something else. So what do these people want? You know, we just want dignity. We want a government that will respond to our needs like anybody in the world. We don't so, have them over here, so don't worry. We have the same problems just on I know, <laughs> it's a know, different level. Because our needs, uh, still the people's needs is not a government that, say, that says your religion is Islam. We need a government that says, this, these are words, this is what's going to happen in terms of investment. You can send your, your kids to the best school. Well, this is what we're going to do, which is the agenda that will touch my life. But I don't think that people in the Arab Muslim world are seen as human beings. It's like sheep. No, we refuse this. Enough is enough. And this is what the, the world has to, to do. To, to maybe understand and we should, this is how we should, the image we should also convey and the message because we are not succeeding as well. We are succeeding in conveying the message that we are violent. Yeah, but I mean, it's as, as we said before, it's only like two years and it does take time. So if, yes. you, would, it, it, if you would have to explain to a Westerner like I am, huh, how can... I do know a little about Islam. I mean, I travel to all these countries, and I've, you know, I've been there for quite a while. But still, uh, you were pointing it out, like democracy and Islam is not a contradiction at all. No. Not at all. What no. are the key points, you would say, you know, supporting this, this statement? I mean, the, it's, the problem is not Islam. The problem is not the religion. In, at least in, in, 
and, and I'm talking about my country, the problem is what they want to do with the religion. Uh, the solution is very easy, and we have success stories and examples. The solution is, we are a Muslim country, but Islam is not to, to be there to dictate how we should behave on, on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, Islam is something personal and has to stay personal, but anything that has to do with the state, it has to be separate. That's it. Once we admit this, then Islam will never be a problem. Uh, as long as there will be political parties who are going to use religion for political uh, re, uh, I mean objectives, it's going to be the mess. Right. Because there is no, uh, I mean, something that comes from the, how do we say, it's a, um, what belongs to the people has to be decided by the people. And the state is an institution that should respond to the people's expectation. And what is religion is something between you and God, and it has to be separated. Uh, it's, it's not um, magic. It's just we need to think and not feel as, as a, a nation. Yeah. We need to, to think about what we want and not say what, uh, ask the users questions about what is my religion. We know what we are Muslims, but how do we want to live? What life do we want for ourselves and for our and for the future generation? Are we gonna fight again for centuries about how women should be dressed, or are we going to decide to be finally involved in scientific research, in d development? In I don't know. So um, it, it's it's. Um, so what are I don't know. what are uh, success stories? You say you said earlier. Uh, by answering this question, Islam and democracy, that you do have success stories. Give me one I'm example or two, besides yourself. I mean, it, it, I'm going to tell you, a success story, Tunisia used to be a success story. We have always been a, 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 a country that says we are Muslim and Arab, but we were living in, in I won't say a democracy, but in a moderation. I mean, Absolutely. what are... They are telling us stories. We are not creating any model. The model has been there. We want to keep it and develop it. It's as simple as that. We we are women. We don't, you know, we've been, I've been born free, and I'm a woman who decides for herself. And, you know, why should it be changed? My mother the same. Why should it be changed? What is this invention they're going to do for us? We have an example of a country that is moderate. Muslim but moderate. We want to keep it and improve it. That's all what we want. So, so uh, what I'm saying? How do you get the young people in this process? Do you see any chance that they will get involved? You said earlier, again, the government is disconnected from the people. How do you see any way in Tunisia? They are, they are getting involved uh, the, through the civil society. They are getting involved, yeah, through their involvement uh, in establishing NGOs, in being uh, uh, members of uh, many unions uh, in uh, univer at the university level or whatever. Uh, I'm going to tell you, for example, and uh, the average age in my own NGO is 29 years old. And they are coming up with, today, they are preparing, like, a proposal which is uh, about uh, how do we fight Violence. So these are, you know, it, it's this youth that is being, uh, that try to be together in groups and build uh, a non-government organization and suggest proposals and conduct activities on the ground. And mm -hmm. But when I said excluded, they are not in politics. I mean, without many young people in the decision-making level, uh, uh, they are excluded in debates. You don't see them a lot on TV. Um, so that's what I'm saying. So uh, they ho they have to be supported in terms of how to be more involved because they don't know how. They are lost. We don't have a culture in being in politics. We don't know how to be involved in politics. So, but, but again, it's a process that's going to come. But uh, they are trying. 
but they're like women, youth are like women, they are not in the decision making positions or they are, when you see, you, you see uh, on TV all the debates, you find sometimes no women and sometimes one woman among ten men and the, the younger generation is not being given enough space. Yeah. But, you know, it's going to come. It's going to come. Many also radio stations are uh, being created by young people and you find their voices on the radio stations and they express themselves. But it is a process. It is a process uh, because we are, it's psychological. The, the, the Arab, I think, culture, they want to see all people because they think they know. Uh, we are not in the culture of youth uh, with a vision in the future. We are a culture that be, that belongs to the past and we go to get inspired from the past so we can move forward and not have a vision, you know, 10 years and this is what... You understand the, the, the difference between our culture and your culture. You look for 10 years, here we see what happened in 10 years so we can move a little bit for the next two or three years. We, built, we did not build this uh, culture of seeing the world in 20 years. We have this culture of how our prophet lived many centuries ago. And this is what is Salafism. Salafism is how the Prophet lived his life. And we want to inject it in 2013. So it's many things have been changed, really, seriously. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely with you. And I, 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 I think this is true for... Uh, it's complicated, you know. But it's, it's complicated, but once you decide to not to make it complicated, it has to go on, on a, you know, many things have to go together. Like, you cannot talk about politics forgetting economy. You cannot solve Tunisia's problem if you do not give people a resource to live. You know, forget it. They're going to be very angry and violent. Um, you cannot talk about, uh, you know, changing the culture if you not talk about improving education. If you're not going to talk about uh, giving also the cultural um, how do aspect a, a um, uh, how do you say its its position because the ministry of culture is is really like uh, the uh, treated as trash can you know they have the money they so many things have to go on at the same time and we are lacking leadership we are lacking leadership Tunisia did not build leaders. We, the, Tunisia, since the, since the um, independence, did not invest in education, but did not create leaders. Yeah. We want leaders in politics, leaders in economy, leaders in culture, leaders, some people who take the, the lead in doing and changing. Um, it's going to come. It's going to come. I do believe it. But uh, we, we don't have this culture of, of, of leadership and taking the risk. That's it. So did it become more difficult for you to get funding for your activities? No, no. On, on the contrary. That's good to hear. That's good well, to hear. for me, because maybe I have my connections. But you know what? I started the NGO when there was zero money in this country. I know. Zero money. I did it. I funded it for the first two years, personally. And I was getting like a little bit from here, a little bit. Now we have an invasion of funding organizations that are funding everybody everywhere with no evaluation, with no really assessing the impact. Uh, but now, now we see that they go back to the NGOs that have experience and, you know, they, they, they want to work not with really, the nascent NGOs are still not experienced very well. So they are making mistakes also, the funding organizations. They are making big mistakes also in funding also, the religious extremists at some point, uh, NGOs that have political connections, you know. Mm -hmm. So we do have unfair competition. But you know what? Uh, for me, as I said, I started it in a in, in a period that is that was very hard. Um, I have my conviction. Tunisia was always has always been my target. I don't work for anybody, and I'm gonna continue until I say I'm tired. <laughs> Because sometimes I am exhausted. But that's, sometimes that's yeah, a very normal exhausted. thing. Huh? I think that's yeah. a very normal thing to be exhausted once in a while, and you should allow yourself to be exhausted. You know, it's. Yes. Uh, I'm going to continue. It's my destiny. 